If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me uh, to the book of Matthew. I want to go to the book of Matthew tonight. I'm going to read a few verses there. We're going to just spend a few minutes talking about developing a kingdom mindset and then what that is and uh, hope that you'll be blessed tonight that you can hear from God. We've enjoyed everything said so far, all the wonderful things that's been said. Looking at Matthew 6.25, starting at 6.25, we're going to read through uh, 34. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and yet are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, and which is today and tomorrow is to cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? For whither we shall be clothed. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let us pray. Father, thank you tonight, Lord, for every testimony. Thank you for every word that's been said. Lord, anoint us to speak for you tonight, God. And Lord, during this uh, time of thanksgiving, we ask you to bless each person in this place. May we leave here different than we came. And Lord, may we be on fire for you, Lord, doing the work of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Tonight, uh, I kind of like what the Amplified says in verse 25. It says, therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried. How many of you have been anxious and worried at times? You've let it so get to you that it, it troubles you. It maybe troubles your sleep. You're not able to sleep well. You're not able to, to focus on things. And so he says, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life greater in quality than food, the body far above and more excellent than clothing? Jesus does not mean that it's wrong to make provisions for the future or physical needs. But he does forbid anxiety or worry that shows a lack of faith in God's fatherly love and care. How many of you the Bible plainly teaches us that if he so clothed the grass of the field, if he feeds the birds of the air, how many knows, and he, he puts the paint in the color of the flowers. He, he, he just, everything that happens, all the animals, everything, the birds of the air are fed. How much more do, are we more valuable than a sparrow tonight? How much more is our life in God's hand more valuable than these things? And so we, we worry about things that never come to pass. How many knows that most of the things we worry about never even come to fruition? It's always just something that, that the devil wants to beat you up about and try to get you sidetracked where you will be focused on worry and anxiety rather than trusting in the kingdom of God. Take no thought and the words, if so God so clothed contains God's promises to all his children. If God so clothed contains God's promises to all his children in this age of trouble and uncertainty. God has promised to provide for our food clothing and necessities. We are forbidden to worry and to be over anxious. Be anxious for nothing but in all things what? Be thankful. Give thanksgiving unto God. Pray without ceasing. Worship the Lord. Know that God is our provider and our source. He's my strength. He's a multiplier, folks. When the widow woman only had enough meal to fix her son, enough food for them to both die, God sends a prophet by and says, if you'll bake me a cake, I will. God will supply your needs for throughout the rest of this famine. And how many believes for the next few years of that 
that famine. How many believes that widow woman, her son ate good? Meal every day, biscuits every day. They had food supplied because they were obedient to God and they trusted in the, what the prophet had to say. We have to trust God no matter what. It doesn't matter what the world says. It's what God says. It doesn't matter what the economy says. What does God say? God's not in trouble. God's not walking heaven wondering what he's going to do. How am I going to supply needs for those people? I'm telling you, drop 600 box car loads of manna every day for the children of Israel in the wilderness. He is not short on supplies. Let me tell you something. God's promised to provide for us. If we will become kingdom-minded, then we can seek to let God reign in our lives. We can ensure that He will assume full responsibility for those wholly yielded to Him. If we can develop a kingdom mindset, then we can follow Christ and seek above all else God's kingdom and His righteousness tonight. The verb seek here implies being continually absorbed in searching for and making a strenuous and diligent effort to obtain His kingdom and His righteousness tonight. This kingdom of God, listen to me folks, this kingdom of God mindset must be sought earnestly by those who desire to have the rule and power of God demonstrate in our lives and in our churches tonight. If we want to experience the things of God. If we want to experience the benefits, we, the, the, God furnishes all these benefits. God supplies all our needs. By His stripes we're healed. Through His name, demons are cast out. I'm telling you, uh, cancers dry up. People's lives are changed. Young men and women are born again in the kingdom. I can tell you devils flee. If we'll trust God, how much more are you more valuable tonight? If you'll trust God, He'll supply every need according to your, to your understanding. Listen, what exactly is the kingdom mind? Let's talk about that for a moment. If we look at Matthew chapter 22, we have the parable of the marriage dinner. If you want to turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22, I'm going to read just a few verses there in Matthew 22. Go with me to verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which made a marriage for his son. He sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them that which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, all things are ready, come unto the marriage. Now listen, folks. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Verse 4 says this. He sent them out a second time and said, Tell them which are invited. I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed and ready to come unto the marriage. The king is saying to his servants, tell them, they don't have to bring anything. They don't have to bring any food in the south here. Whenever we have dinners, whenever we invite people to our dinner, what's the first thing most people say? What can I bring? Is that right? If I invited you to my house tonight, and I said, we're going, to have some, we're going to have some sandwiches, we're going to have some food. Well, what can I bring, Pastor? Can I bring a dish? Can I bring some dessert? Can I bring this or that? Listen, this king, this kingdom mindset, the king owns it all. He says, tell them the calves have been slayed. The steaks are on the grill. There is plenty of wine. There is plenty of, uh, of drink. There's plenty of everything. There's no shortage of bread. There's no shortage of anything. Tell them the table's been spread. The banquet hall's ready. Even when they get there, don't worry about it. I don't have anything to wear. How many of you have invited somebody to church and they said, I don't have nothing to wear? I don't have anything to wear. Well, just bring some. Just come. You know the king, you know what he said? Don't worry, because when you get here, you're going to change anyway. I'm going to put a king's robe on you. Amen. He said, I'm supplying the robe. I'm going to supply your needs. I'm going to supply the dinner. You don't have to bring a thing. Matter of fact, don't bring nothing to this wedding. Just show up, and I'll supply you with food and clothing. You know, let me bring it a little closer home. If I invited you to dinner tonight and I said, I'm going to pick you up at 7 o'clock and I'm going to take you and I'm going to feed you the finest dinner you've ever had, the finest meal, and it's not going to cost you anything, 
Well, Pastor, I don't have the money. I, I'm taking you the fanciest place I know, and you don't have to spend a dime. Just all I'm going to ask you is be ready when I get there. And I come by in my car to pick you up, and you're all ready to go, and we get in the car, and me and Deb, we start down that road, and we take you to where we're going to feed you. Do you know you're not sitting in the back of that car thinking, hmm, I hope we don't run out of gas. I hope the pastor put gas in the car. I hope the pastor has air in his tires. I hope the engine runs good. I hope this is not a jalopy. I hope he's changed the oil. I hope that, that this ain't going to break down before we get there. You don't worry about that. You know the car's got gas. You know the tires got air in them. You know the engine's running well. Everything's prepared for. You don't have to pay a dime. You don't have to cost you nothing. When you get there, we're going to furnish you a tuxedo. We're going to furnish you a wedding gown. We're going to furnish you everything you need to come to this dinner. You don't have to bring nothing. That's what God is saying to the church world. That's what God is saying to that world. Come as you are. Bring yourself to an altar of prayer. I will forgive you of your sins and supply your every need from this day forward. Can somebody give God glory? All I'm saying is why do we worry? Why are we worried tonight about anything? God is saying that if we could get in that develop a kingdom mindset then God furnishes everything anyway. But the problem is we want to bring something as if that makes us feel more welcome. It makes us feel more accepted. But the truth is, it doesn't work. Because God's saying, just bring yourself. There's nothing you can add to what God has got. He'll give you everything you need. He'll supply all your needs according to His riches. He feeds the birds of the air. He'll feed you. He's, gonna, he's building a mansion in heaven. He's built us homes in heaven to supply forever, folks. I want you to understand something. God has gone to prepare a place for me. And if He has gone to prepare a place for me, how many knows He said He'd come and return unto me and come again and receive me? We must understand the king is saying to the servants, tell them they don't have to bring anything to the stakes are ready. The tuxedo, the gowns are being furnished. The com compliance of the king's, compliments of the king's wardrobe. You see, in a kingdom, the king furnishes everything. He provides the food, he furnishes the clothing, and he expects his guests to wear. He's inviting them to a dinner, and all the expenses has been absorbed. He's taking full responsibility for their needs. When you and I accept his invitation to repent and to be forgiven, we could receive eternal life. We brought nothing. We, can, we came empty and destitute, but we left with everything. How many believe we're now an inheritance of the kingdom of God? How many believe we're joint heirs with Christ tonight? Not 50-50, joint heirs, complete heirs with Christ. Whatever God has, He's given it to us. Listen, church, when you and I have accepted this invitation to repent and be forgiven, we could receive eternal life. We brought nothing. We came empty and destitute, but we left with everything. We were reconciled to God, elevated to the status of sonship. Can you imagine you and me have been elevated to the status of sonship. To the God of this world, or the God of creation. The God who created this world. Listen, folks, to meet some high-ranking official, to meet a general would be something. To meet your favorite person, your favorite singer, your favorite actor, or to meet some politician that you've always revered in a high place, to be invited into a place where nobody else has been invited to, to show uh, that your prestige to you. But folks, we have sonship status with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why should we worry and why should we be impressed with anything this world has to offer us? Like the little boy waving at that ship out there. The man says, boy, what are you doing? He says, I'm waving at that ship. And he's waving it in. He said, boy, he said, that ship ain't coming in here just because you're waving. He said, oh, yes, he is. How do you know? He said, because my father's the captain of that ship. And he's coming. <laughs> I know. I know he's coming. I know he's coming. It's who you know. It really is. It's who you know. If you know God, all things are possible. I'm telling you, folks, it's written. Everything's ready. You were reconciled to God, elevated to the status of sonship. 
You became adopted sons and daughters of God. You see in, in the parable in verse 5, they could not attend the wedding because they were too busy worrying about their farms, their merchandise. They were not kingdom minded. See, everything I own, my cars, my house, everything I own, it's really not mine. God gave it all to me. I'm just a manager. God's the owner. You know, he hired me to manage these things. He said, son, I want you to raise them kids in church. I want you to tell them grandbabies about Jesus. I'm going to give you a home. I'm going to give you a car to drive. I'm going to give you a great job. I'm going I'm to watch over and protect you. I'm going to clothe you. You ain't going to want for nothing. But in return, you're going to share the kingdom with everybody you know. You're going to tell them about me. You're going to share the love of God because you don't want to keep it hoarded up to yourself. Folks, all I'm saying is I'm the manager. God's the owner. It's hard to give something to God. It's already His. It's already His. See, we've got to be kingdom-minded and not worldly-minded. You see... In the kingdom of God, God owns everything. We are His servants, His managers, but He's the owner. I'm accountable to God, but because He owns everything, it takes all the pressure off me. Everything belongs to Him. See, when I picked you up, well, the pastor's come and got me tonight. He's got them Michelin tires. Them things are expensive. Have you priced a set of Michelin? How can I afford to put a set of tires on his car? All well, them things liable to cost thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money. I didn't ask you to buy no tires. I just said get in the car and let's go eat. See, we come to God with all these hang-ups. What about this? What about that? I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. And God is saying, I've done took care of all that. Just coming to me, all ye that are heavy laden, that are heavy burden. Take my yoke upon you. Lean, lean on me. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You worry. We worry too much about things that are beyond our control. My goodness, folks. Worrying's like a rocking chair. Man, it just gives you something to do. You don't never get anywhere. Like walking on a treadmill. You're just killing yourself. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. Just listen to me. It's life can be a treadmill if we're not careful. In the kingdom, God takes full responsibility because He's the owner of everything. He maintains it all. He maintains everything. Let me put it this way. In the world, we have ownership mentality instead of kingdom God mentality. If you were invited today to be a guest for dinner and to ride in a car, then you would be free from worry and anxiety. You're not worried about the fuel, the oil, the tires. That's my responsibility. I own the car. You don't have to worry about food. I'm paying for your meal. That's my responsibility. All you have to do is accept the invitation. When Jesus Christ said, come unto me, how many believe that's what he meant? Come. Bring all. Just come. As you are. We used to sing that old hymn every time we'd have an altar call. Just as I am without one plea. You may remember that. Just as I am, I come to Jesus. And he takes care of the rest of it. My sins are gone. They've been washed away. As far as the east is from the west, my sins are gone. He's cast them behind his back never to be remembered again. Come unto the Lord. If you were invited, you know that he supplies it. You see, that's what it means to be kingdom minded. In a kingdom the king has loyal servants around him who he speaks to and they in turn speak to those who are invited. God does not speak to that world. He speaks to us. And then we in turn go and tell the world what he says. And we tell them they're invited. And we explain the conditions of the invitation. See, God's not speaking to that world. He's speaking to you and me. He's speaking to his church. Is that what the Bible says? He talks to his church. He talks to us. Just like in a kingdom, the kingdom would send servants out. He says, you go out in the highways and byways. You go out and tell everybody, invite them. So you go take the invitations out and you tell them to come in. That's what you and I do after every service. Somebody, a little boy, asked, the, 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 uh, asked one of the deacons in the church. He said, well, uh, what time does this service, uh, what time does service begin? He says, as soon as that preacher gets done. Well, y'all get that about tomorrow. See, the real service is out there. When I get done, the service begins. Right? 
You, you go out. You, you send the message of, of redemption. You preach the message of, of, of redemption and the, and the blood of Jesus Christ washes us clean, us from all sin. So we have to have that kingdom of God, that kingdom-minded mentality. God does not speak to the world. He speaks to us. And then we, in turn, go and tell the world what He says. We tell them that they've been invited. And once they've accepted the invitation, and once they've accepted, and once they've repented and become sons, that, and been, uh, once they get elevated to sonship, how many of those, then they can talk to God themselves? He hears them when they pray, when they, when they pray the prayer of repentance. How many of those, He hears their cry and their plea? In verse 11 of Matthew 22, I'm going to tell you something. It reads like this. When the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man which had not a wedding garment. This man had accepted the invitation, but he ignored the conditions. He refused to wear the king's garments that had been furnished. How many are guilty? How many are sitting in churches tonight or this, this morning? How many people are, went to church today all over this world? but refused to put on the garment. Refused to accept the invitation. Just came to hang out. Just came to church. Just came to spend some time. But never truly submitted to God. Never truly had any intentions of giving their heart to God. Just being in the crowd's not enough, folks. There's a lot of crowds follow Jesus. But I can tell you that same crowd that said Hosanna to the king and throwed palm branches down and said Hosanna to the king of kings, Hosanna to the king, that same crowd's hollering crucify him just a few days later. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Not just showing up at church. It's not just coming to the table. But you've got to put on the wedding garment. And that's to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's having your sins washed away. That's being born again and taking on the new nature, the nature of Christ. And that's what we have to tell that world out there. Half that world out there thinks they're going to go to heaven if they're good enough. I'm a good person. I've never hurt anybody. I don't steal. I don't do anything mean. I'm a good person. That's not going to get you to heaven. If your goodness to get you to heaven, then Jesus Christ wasted His time at Calvary. He wouldn't have had to die on a cross if you could get there for your goodness. Am I still preaching, by the way? That world out there thinks all they got to do is be good. My good outweighs my bad if I just do a good thing here and there. No, it's not all about that. It's about, listen, I'm not good to go to heaven, but because I'm on my way to heaven and I've been born and saved, I'm telling you, I want to. There's a desire to do some good things for the kingdom. i got to get you through the end of this. In the kingdom of God, it's not enough to show up for church and sign the membership card. Let that just soak in a minute. It's not enough to, just to sign the card. Show up. But you have to be a receptive to God's call to repentance and shed the old coat and put on the new. We have to be willing to shed that old life. I said a long time ago, Maybe even last Sunday. There's no way the God of this universe, there's no way the God that created Adam and Eve, the world, the God that created the stars, the sun and the moon, the God that created the oceans, the God that created all these things can come and live inside of you and there be no change whatsoever. No way. Because when he moves in, how many know something's going to happen? Something's got to change. You see, he was speechless and escorted and cast out into the outer darkness where he was weeping and there was gnashing of teeth. You see, the kingdom-minded is all about repentance and restoration. It's about mercy and grace. God has forgiven us and he demands us to go and do the same to others. Do likewise. How many of those God's forgive you, you go and forgive others? How many believe that I told somebody a while back that forgiveness is divine? You ever heard that to err is human, but forgiveness to forgive is divine? Do you know what that means? Does anybody have any idea what that means? It means that you can't forgive outside of the nature of God. My flesh will not forgive. Well, 
I got one amen anyway. My flesh will not forgive. But how many knows the new creature, the new creation that come inside of me has taught me the sweetest words I ever heard was I forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. And in return, I can forgive others. The flesh won't do it, but the spirit will. How many knows that? You have to, it's, 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 it's divine. It's, a, it's an act of God. It's an act of, it's a God, act of God's nature. It's not an act of the flesh. It's not in flesh. It's not in man to be good. It's not in man to forgive. It's not in you. But when the Holy Spirit moves in and God saves us, how many knows then we can do it? Amen. To be kingdom-minded is not only, listen to me, about teaching us not to worry or how we are to lose the ownership mentality in order to gain the kingdom mindset. It's about forgiveness. It's about experiencing the mercy and grace of God in this hour. Folks, let me tell you something. In closing tonight, I just want to say we must develop a kingdom mindset. We have to surrender it all to God. We have to let God forgive through us. We have to let God love through us. How many of those, it's, do you really like people who don't like you? <laughs> do you like spending time with people that don't like you? Do you want to go to dinner with somebody that hates you? I don't think so. But do you know if you have the love of God in your heart, how many of it can change everything? It can change everything. I want to be able to go to bed tonight and lay my head on my pillow and know everything's all right between me and Jesus. We used to sing that old song. I, I love, I just love the gospel hymns. But we used to sing a song, Nothing Between Me and the Savior. How many of you can sing that song? I believe you can sing it. I, I believe everybody in this church can sing Nothing Between You and Me. Can you? Nothing Between You and I. Let's bow our heads tonight. Thank you, Jesus. All around this building, I want to ask you something.